Trina Solar um, by um, Gao Lai, who's their senior product manager, and he will talk about reliability of 600 watt plus ultra high power modules and its innovative integrative integrated delivery solutions. Gao Lai, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Michael, and thank you, everyone, uh, every audience. Uh, my name is Gauley and come from Trina Solar, global product management team. And uh, today I'd like to introduce the reliability of our 600 plus ultra high power modules and uh, the integrated delivery solution. Uh, the topics we'll cover, uh, today I'll cover three topics majorly. Uh, the first topic is uh, ecosystem construction progress of 600 watt plus. And uh, second is a module reliability. And the third is integrated solution for delivery. First of all, let me introduce our Vertex product family members to you. Uh, since uh, February 2020, Trina Solar had launched five uh, major products which covers power range from 400 watt to 670 watt. And uh, the Vitex modules have average 40 watt to 120 watt higher power than the industrial level. And uh, as you can see here, the Trina Solar 670 Vitex module is the first ma mass production 600 plus watt module in the industry. It's our flagship product. And it's a 500 watt uh, product, Vedex, uh, which is the first launched in February, 2020. It's the first pr mass produced 500 watt plus mo uh, product in the industry as well. And our Vedex S, it promotes the residential small size module to 500 watt area. It's a uh, distributed uh, market superstar till now. Okay, uh, let me uh, guide you to, in, to step into our first topic, the ecosystem construction. Start from 2020, uh, 600 PV open innovation, Alice uh, had established, uh, started uh, from 30, uh, 36 initial members. And until today, the partner, partner uh, numbers had uh, expanded to uh, 89 uh, partners, okay? Uh, during these two years, uh, almost two years, all the, uh, all the Alliance partners had overcome the bottlenecks, technical bottlenecks, especially on the ingo uh, pulling, wafer slicing, and uh, sale manufacture, module manufacture, product design, reliability, verification, uh, junction box design, glass manufacture, inverter, tracker capability, and many, many things. And uh, we are very proud of what we achieved. So here, I'd like to grantly introduce a design tool to all the audience today who joined. And uh, for the first time, Trina Solo introduced a PV design tool. It's assistant to first, uh, the, for the first time, we combined the module, tracker, and the inverter uh, characters together. So you will be easily find out uh, the main components characters in one tool. It will quite speed up your design speed. And you can now easily access this tool through the link pvd.trainersolar.com. You can type in in your browser and you can access this tool. In this tool, you will find you will find all the inventor who compatible with uh, Vertex 210 module. Of course, includes the, our uh, partners module, and you can find all the trackers which are compatible with our modules as well. And you, and until today, we have already uh, published two compatible white papers uh, for the tracker and for the inventor. And you can get this uh, two 
a white paper free from Trina Solar website. And uh, this tool can help you to get the uh, compatible uh, components easier. And if you have any further question, of course, you can get contact with Trina Solar sales manager or get contact with uh, uh, partner, uh, partner sales managers as well. Another significantly achievement of over 600 plus island, open islands uh, is a standardization of the module size and the wafer size. As you know, in the past, all the conventional modules, they have different sizes uh, again, uh, between different manufacturers, which will generate a lot of uh, effort for our supplier to produce different size glass, different size wafer, different size frame. But after, and of course, for the customers as well, they have to adjust their design. But after, as soon as the 600 watt uh, open islands uh, established, uh, we have first time um, uniformed the wafer size and uh, we, and continuously, we have uniform, uniformed the uh, module uh, dimensions to the uh, same one. So nowadays, if you look at the two term, uh, modules, uh, especially the 600 plus modules, they share the same size, which uh, I, we believe it's a big achievement for the industry and uh, it will benefit to our upstream and downstream partners. According to the open collaboration innovation concept of this audience, uh, we have uh, developed quite a lot of uh, capacity and according to the uh, PV, PV info link uh, forecast uh, from, uh, January, for, from July uh, 2021, we can see that the big wafer modules includes 210 and 182 is going to dominate the market. market. And uh, if you look at the capacity of wafer and, uh, the, and the module, uh, sale and the module, you will see that uh, in 2025, the forecast tell us 210 will uh, occupy more than 50% of the shell. And uh, here I'd like to gladly uh, tell uh, the audience that Trina Solar will begin to offer uh, 50, uh, 50 gigawatts plus uh, capacity from, 20, from end of 2021 and 80 of the capacity will be the over 210 VETEX module. Now, why is uh, VETEX is so popular? Okay, um, here is a value assessment from the from Hoffer. It tells us uh, for the fixed tilt and the uh, single row uh, tracker uh, project uh, in Germany, the fixed tilt, uh, it can help the customer save the capex, uh, capex around two cent uh, euro, uh, euro and uh, the LCOE. Uh, compared with uh, M10 uh, module, it can save around four uh, four percent LCOE. And for a, a single single row tracker project in Spain, and uh, the the 210, 660 module can save around one cent uh, euro. CapEx and the LCOE will be 1.9% lower. The, the saving is majorly comes from the mounting and the installation cost first, and the second, the electrical systems and the freight. Okay, uh, why we have the mounting and the installation saving? It's, uh, it's, uh, we, uh, it, it comes from the innovation low, uh, voltage design. And the low voltage design, which will increase the single, uh, a single stream power around 32% com compared with a uh, conventional one. And the uh, ultra high power module, as I just said, the 660 module will have uh, around 120 watt higher power than the conventional one. It will reduce the quantity of the modules uh, which we used for the project and it will reduce installation effort and speed, speed up the construction progress. Meanwhile, I will talk about the freight in the following slides, the freight saving. Okay, so that's the progress about our, our 600 plus 
uh, islands progress. Second, I will introduce our module reliability work. We choose a uh, Trina Solar Reliability Guarantee System. It's based on the customer values. And uh, the foundation of, uh, of this system is the Trina's all stage product insurance system. And uh, we also rely on the China State Key Library of PV, uh, PV, PV Science and Technology, which provides opti, opti, uh, optimal product design. Why we see optimal design is so important? Let me make an example. A metal, if you throw it into the water, it will sink. But if you design it into a soup, the soup can sail across the ocean. So it shows how important of the design. If we look at the, our 210 module, VEDEX, compared with M10 module, you will easily find out our, our 210 670 module is 4.3, uh, 4.6% 4, 4 longer than 182 72 uh, module, but, uh, but it's still shorter than, than uh, M10 uh, 78 module. Uh, from the y, from Y's point of view, it will be 50% wider than M M10 serial. So our module is relatively uh, larger, and uh, our design team have think over and over how to how to overcome this uh, uh, this uh, weakness. And uh, what we did is we conducted the non-destructive cutting technology. If you look at the pictures in the right hand, you will find out uh, the non-destructive cutting. Uh, technology can provide a uh, much more smoother uh, section uh, pick, uh, section of the cell, and uh, uh, such kind of technology improves uh, uh, improves the cell um, strength, uh, mechanical strength quite a lot, and and reduce the uh, risk of crack. Meanwhile, uh, we have introduced we have did a lot of analysis and and. Uh, uh, designed a more stronger uh, frame and uh, compare with the conventional one, it can provide a better support on our uh, emulation uh, uh, part. How to verify our design is feasible. We introduced a mechanism to, to verify our uh, mechanical reliability. It contains one standard test. It, it, it is a static load test from the standard IEC standard and uh, another five enhanced tests. And all the tests is done, samples are picked randomly from production line. So a standard test is a static, to static load test. We have to uh, maintain the same, same mechanical lo uh, load level as the traditional ones to really compatible with the designs. So we verified according to the IEC standard. And uh, uh, of course, the test result is good. And uh, the EL image is used in the right hand. And after the test, we already uh, got the uh, IEC certification granted uh, in January, 2021. So next is number one, enhanced tests. Uh, it's non-uniform snow low tests. Is simul it's a simulation of 2.8 meter snow. So after the snow test, uh, our module uh, have get only 0.56% uh, uh, degradation and the, the, the frame have no deformation at all. And here comes a third party test report uh, screenshot. The second enhanced test is static load test under extreme low temperature. It's a simulation for the modules which we will work in the uh, very north high latitude uh, environments. Okay, uh, after the test, uh, okay, the, the mechanical load test criteria is uh, plus uh, 5,400 Pascal and the minus uh, 2,400 Pascal. And the test result is plus. After the test, the power degradation of the double glass and the single glass module is, is, uh, is uh, almost um, no change. And, the, I, and the, for the double glass, it's, or it's, it's lower than 0.2% 0 0 
percent, and for our single glass, it's less than one point five percent. And here is a third party test reports screenshot as well. And this is a simulated simulation for the heel uh, impact. Uh, we have conducted two tests. One is a standard IEC, and another is a hasted, uh, has the uh, thirty-five millimeter. And after test, we also tested the degradation of the module. Uh, for our for a single glass, uh, the degradation is less than zero point seventy percent, and for a dual glass, it's less than one percent. It's the point fifty three percent. And if you need a more strict hail impact uh, product, uh, then you can get contact with uh, Trina Solar. We have the solution for you. This test is uh, finished by the two uh, SART. Okay, the fourth enhanced the test is dynamic load test. Um, as everyone knows that uh, after the module is uh, deployed in the uh, uh, in, in the field, the module will endure a long-term dynamic strength uh, on, the, on, the, on, on, on it. So the frame, the cell, and the back sheet, of course, the glass, well, sub, uh, uh, they are keeping subjecting um, uh, fatiguing strengths and which will cause some failure. So uh, we did a test to simulate such kind of situation. According to our test result, the Vertex 670 watt module, uh, single, single glass version, uh, it can suffer uh, plus minus 1,500 Pascal uh, mechanical load, uh, uh, dynamic load test. Uh, sorry, here it's a mistake. This one is a clamp installation. So uh, for the for the for the 100,000 105,000 Pascal, it can achieve uh, 6,000 uh, 680 uh, cycles, and uh, for 1,000 pass. One pound, uh, plus minus 1,000 Pascal uh, test, it can suffer uh, 7,500 cycles. And for a dual glass module, um, the Vedex uh, with clamp mounting solution, it can achieve uh, more than uh, achieve uh, 20 uh, 20,000 cycles. So it's it's seven it's seven seven point uh, five times better than the IEC standard. And for uh, for a single glass and for a dual glass, it's maximum twenty times uh, strength than uh, IEC standard. This is a test report from from our party. And the fifth, hence the test is a wind tunnel test. We believe this one is our this one is the best way to verify the mechanical stability. So we conducted the two tests, two two sets of tests. The first one is the uh, extreme, uh, or you can say limitation and test. Uh, we applied uh, 30, million, 30 meter per second wind speed um, to 62 meter per second wind speed. And uh, uh, for VEDEX module, the, 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 the limitation we can achieve is 32.6 uh, meter per second wind speed and which is better than the reference module. And after this uh, limitation is achieved, we also conducted a long-term uh, stability test. Uh, we, uh, we fixed the module at, uh, at 60 tilt and, uh, 60 and 45 tilt uh, with screw and hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, fixation method. And both of the tests is passed. It passed, and uh, the GL before and after the tests is still maintain the same level. The power degradation is less than three percent as well. Here is the test report from the third party and the pictures of the tests. And after all the tests, uh, we have finished. We have some um, suggestions from Trina. Uh, number one is that. Uh, the insulation method is strongly impact the system stability. Number two is from Trina, we really suggest we use a hybrid uh, fixation for the high speed wind area, which means a clamp plus a, a screw. 
Okay, so uh, now I get into the, the third part, the integrated delivery solution. As I mentioned before, uh, Trina is a customer value driven company and uh, we conducted a study on, um, we, 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 we tried best to, to, to find out the saving points for a customer and uh, we did uh, conducted a study on the transportation part. Okay, and we found out that the uh, transportation of the module will take a big portion of the costs. So we try to introduce a better solution for, our trans for, for the module transportation to save the cost and lower the carbon footprint. The solution we propose here to, to our customer is the vertical. And compared with a conventional module, we can see that the space container space uh, utilization rate uh, can increase 5%. And uh, uh, meanwhile, the, the, the container loading capacity can increase 10%. What that means? That means uh, during uh, this year, 2021, the freight, the freight is increased 2.4 times. So it can help um, to save the customer's cost around 3.3 US dollar per cent uh, per watt. And uh, uh, the carbon emission will be lower. And uh, as our rough calculation, uh, the carbon, uh, is, uh, carbon emission will cut down around four to 8%. And uh, we talked about uh, uh, the cost saving, uh, but uh, what about the reliability? Uh, Trina have conducted all the tests to verify the reliability of this in new inv innovation uh, packaging solution. We have conducted uh, the uh, ISTA 3E tests and uh, the uh, tests is all passed. Uh, meanwhile, in order to verify uh, the, usability, uh, the, the, the usability, or I can say the security of this solution. Uh, we have uh, invested quite a lot of effort to verify uh, the uh, situation when the module delivered to the uh, project site. Okay, in the window, in the internal test, we can see the module can suffer around uh, around class uh, class uh, twelve went. Okay. It is passed, but we still uh, suggest that we should put the modules in a flat and a solid land. Okay, and uh, uh, someone could could uh, concern on how to unpackage our module. Uh, we have did some studies in the conventional uh, projects. We found out in order to unpackage the uh, module, uh, the, the local uh, operator, they will handmade uh, some wooden standard support to support the modules for, from falling down. So uh, Trina Solar, uh, we standardized uh, the standard support to make it into wood, uh, to, to metal. So it will be more reliable and easy for use. And it is recyclable as well. And uh, how to manage the unpackaging in the project site? Uh, it's three steps, very easy. Number one, we just open the box. Number two, slide in the standard supporter. Number three, cut the tilt and pull the modules onto the standard supporter. It's quite, it's quite efficient, quite efficiency and uh, uh, can save quite a lot of cost for our customer. In order to verify the stability of the uh, open the box, we have also conducted uh, the wind tunnel test to see if it's still at the same, same level as the conventional one or not. Uh, the test result shows that uh, with 10 pieces of modules, uh, no matter it's standard or vertical, the, the, the situation is almost the same. And uh, in order to protect uh, the, the modules and protect uh, the workers, it's better to tight the other modules, no matter it's horizontal or it's vertical. And uh, we have also verified, or we can see, also delivered 
the, pro, the, the modules to the projects. The first example is a Da Shaidang project in Qinghai province, China, and uh, which is uh, already finished the construction and verified of a vertical, vertical packaging solution. Another project is in Japan. And here is an example from Korea. Okay, so that's just some examples. And we have hundreds of, more than hundreds of projects uh, delivered uh, globally. And um, many of them is uh, 600 watt plus and, um, and uh, until today, China already get 25 gigawatt plus signed orders. And we have finished 10 gigawatt shipment. And this number is increasing fastly. Okay, here is all my content of the day. Uh, some, summary, some summary of today. Number one, with the leading product performance innovation design concept and the highest stream power concept, the Vertex module brings more saving over initial cost and LCOE to the customers. Number two, the design of Vertex module has gone through a simulation test of extreme climates such as strong wind, extreme, extreme cold, hill, and, uh, and others, and it maintains high reliability and the mechanical performance. Number three, the innovation delivery solution design brings a lower fire cost and uh, lower carbon footprint. Meanwhile, China had uh, integrated a delivery solution which ensured the security of deployment. Thank you very much. That's all my content today. Thanks, Gao. Uh, very nice, uh, very interesting, the solutions you developed uh, for uh, your different products. Um, so um, maybe a few questions um, we have. Um, so I think um, one was also here, the latest one was regarding um, also a next generation um, technology, a cell technology. Um, somebody asked, so as it is known that Trina has a 500 megawatt top gun capacity based on 210. Um, is there any, any share any details on, on the module layout for 210 top con? Um, our 210 top, uh, top con, we are aimed at two segments. One is residential and other is utility. So it will keep 40 layout and uh, 60, 66 layout. Uh, yeah, that's is uh, uh, that is Outlook, and we will we will launch our product very soon. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> um, there's one question here from Jörg Altos from TUV. Um, what was the failure criteria for the seven thousand cycles in the DML test if it was not the power? Can you? It's very detailed. I don't know, but uh, maybe. If you can take it from top of your head, otherwise maybe in written. Uh, the fail the failure criteria of the seven thousand is a broken of the frame, so we believe this uh, uh, this failure will cause uh, uh, will cause the failure of the uh, performance. So we believe that's that is reasonable. Okay. Um, Maybe you can also address this one question about tracker compatibility for 10 to 10 modules. I think that's an easy one since you have your own tracker in. <laughs> yeah, as I just, uh, as I just said, uh, we have just uh, uh, launched our, uh, published our tracker capability white paper. In this white paper, uh, we have more than 30 different tracker uh, models, comes from 40. Uh, track, top tracker suppliers, uh, compatible list. Okay, super. Okay, I think, thanks so much. Uh, just in case there's more questions, it would be great if you could answer them in the chat. Uh, thanks again for this uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Also very exciting, the new design solution you presented. Uh, thanks, Gao.
well. So I'm very excited to, to have now with us um, Stefan Müller, CEO of Park, uh, Jason Kwan and Gao uh, from Longi J and Trina once again. So the we just have around 30, 40 minutes um, 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 to, to basically uh, reflect on the conference. And the idea was um, to start basically with Stefan, simply who's uh, um, a user of these um, of modules and um, is also confronted with all these innovations that we've been seeing recently. So um, we, we wanted to structure it that way that we start with Stefan to give an intro on, on, on innovation and the challenges he sees. And then Jason Kwan and Gao, we discuss about that. Yeah. Um, okay. So Stefan, uh, great to have you. Um, so let's, let's maybe, maybe start um, um, with, with Anna Park. Um, you're an EPC, you're a developer, you're an IPP. You are a company that's really embracing uh, solar innovations um, um, in general. Um, so, what, 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 what are you seeing in terms of innovations that you've actually incorporated recently, recently also into your into your power plants? Yeah, at first, thanks for for being there. For me, it's always interesting to see what's going on in the market. Uh, uh, and uh, and and to see the developments which normally you don't see, yeah, because you get the module and that's it, uh, for sure. Um, we have a market which uh, which I think is very dynamic, is very interesting, very good, and I see more and more new things are coming up. On the other hand, and Michael, I think you confirm it. All the developments which we have seen now with half cut cells, Schindel, and so on, these are in generally old things, yeah, which are implemented now. Yeah. So, and that's the reason why I'm super keen. And for me, also, only the discussion about uh, increasing efficiency with a different back sheet is for me. This is for me new stuff. Yeah. And this is for me interesting. And I'm looking forward to see more and more things so that we are really uh, coming to 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 much higher efficiencies in the modules. Uh, and finally, higher efficiencies means finally also hopefully lower cost and finally uh, uh, reduced LCOE because this is the part of everything. Um, for us, new developments have a bit, uh, I would say, it's a, it's, it's a, I would say, a, in general, a deeper discussion. Do we really want this? Yeah, because you should have in your mind that uh, partly we are the IPP, we are the asset owner, and we are keen on, in generally, new technologies if the product are for us. Uh, but on the other hand, we get it all financed by local banks, and the banks are in generally very conservative. So they are in generally not keen to finance on non-recourse basis a 50 or 100 megawatt project with the cutting edge te technology, because they need to evaluate the risk. And the same is with um, with other developments which are more in the PPA level. So when you sign a corporate PPA with, uh, I would say, a big utility or even a big corporate, they have even another view. No? Um, they, for example, focus a lot on CO2 footprint yeah, or uh, recycling concepts. They And they are asking us, even if they are the off-taker of the kilowatt hours of the electron, and they don't care um, uh, how we install it, or they shouldn't care, because we are the developer, we are the EPC, we are the owner. Yeah. So, and this is for me always a, a interesting move, and we always have to adapt ourselves. So, but in, in in general, we are always a fan of new things because finally we hope that uh, everything can become a bit easier in the production. Um, and we can uh, we have also better arguments. I mean, we just talked a bit about the the fluorofree back sheet. I mean, all the discussion about environmental topics are essential. Yeah, I mean, and th th this becomes more and more. So the off taker of green energy is not anymore open for buying the electricity. Probably the the GOs, the certificates. They also want to know how and with whom and with what and where you generate ele electricity. Uh, and I think this is, this is this is cool, and this is interesting for us. But this in increases the the, the discussions. Um, what what we have seen now is that the increase of the efficiency is always perfect for us. But not all new developments are also, I would say, immediately the breakthrough in the reduced LCOE. As an example, 
Um, I think we the 1,500 volt is more or less standard now. Yeah, uh, but a few years ago when it was introduced, um, all the suppliers of the connectors, of the cables, of the junction boxes, they sold the 1,500 volt approved additional uh, electrical parts as a premium. So I think the, the the savings which we got from the 1,500 volt because of better design and and longer cables and so on was eaten up by uh, all the suppliers of all the small materials. Yeah, now it is standard. Yeah, or another discussion which we had, <clears throat> Michael, yesterday when we made our pre-session in terms of large mo mo modules. I completely understand that uh, from the cost point of view, it is better and uh, and uh, and easier to take a 70 cells modules instead of a 60 cell because the robot takes the module once. So utilization rate is clear, but for us, it's an issue because the, the, the weight of the mo modules is too high for handle it by one person only. So we need two and two person means more cost, more time. So the benefit from our side and especially on the utility scale is not so much that the modules are getting larger and larger. I think it is different if you act in the residential market or in the commercial industrial market. These people, and it's a marketing story, they want to have cutting edge technology, they want to have the coolest stuff. Yeah. But for us, it is more important that we have a reliable product which is bankable with a high quality and ideally, I would say, a durability, a lifetime of 30 or even 35 years. So these are a bit, I would say, uh, small views which we which we have from um, from from yeah I would say utility scale uh, uh, developer EPC uh, and uh, IPP and and if you look at you mentioned also sustainability for example um, which is on the one hand a challenge and probably also an opportunity at the same time so so what does yeah. that mean or what does it entail this whole topic. Uh, Naya, I think it is it is not anymore a buzzword. Let's be clear. No, I think uh, uh, all the big players who are signing direct corporate PPAs with us, and this can be the Deutsche Bahn, the German Railway, or it can be whatever, Heineken, or you name it, IKEA, I don't know. They are really, they are concerned about the sustainability of the product. Yeah, and, uh, and and this means really transparency on the supply chain, but also on the, as I mentioned, a, a good recycling co concept is really important, not only for us, but it's important for the final offtake. So the, the word sustainability is becoming more and more important um, when we move more and more to corporate PPAs. And this is for me also new, to be honest. Yeah, this is, uh, this is interesting. I mean, when we are the owner, we in generally leave the, planned for 25, 30 years, and then it's written off, and then it's perfect, and we trade the energy, and we're making money. But at the moment, we see a different trend. And, and, and if you, and I think so, you mentioned also yesterday when we had our talk, um, the, um, that, that you are now even looking into into tracking in, in Central European um, locations, which you haven't done in the past. Uh, yeah. And this is also, I would say, a bit, a, bit, a bit a new situation. I mean, in the past, we always in generally try to find a way to reduce the, the subsidies. And in, if, I mean, Michael, you know, we talked a lot about dual use and something like this, yeah? But this was a bit, I would say, a fake story. But now the dual use idea is, is interesting because uh, at the moment, and we've seen now a few systems already here in the Northern German part, um, where they installed a tracking system which large area mo modules with a higher distance, uh, mainly driven by the building permit that the ground coverage ratio sh should be a bit more relaxed. So we, we, we should not uh, build it too close. And then the idea is automatically simple. If you have a wider distance, you make a tracking system probably even a bit higher. Yeah. And then you make a bifacial system. And then you can also make use of the situation when, when, when you have snow in winter time on the system, then you can use the tracker. Let's, let's uh, slide, uh, let's, let, let, let's let the snow slide down and then you bring it back and you can uh, generate energy. And at the moment on the, on the, on the market, um, at the moment we deliver them the energy payers produce. Yeah? But this is also changing now to real load curves. And, and the load curve means that you have a generally not only on the exchange, but also when you make a deal with a PPA offtaker, that in the morning and in the evening, the energy has a higher value. Yeah. So, and then the whole discussion about does it make sense to put 
a tracker system in northern Germany is off because then it's not only dual use, it's triple use because you can only whatever grow hay there, which is organical and you, you can take it out easily with a tracker system. So I think there are a lot of things coming up now um, where we can combine the concept of the large area module, which in general should be a bit cheaper, plus a bifacial idea and a tracker in the Northern German part, which I think is new, but it's, I think it makes sense now. Okay, and when we talk about innovation cycles, so um, um, if the, we're seeing so much innovation now at the moment, yeah. and of course it can happen, I think, we also saw that yesterday from Fraunhofer CSP, um, the, the stronger the innovation, of course, the more issues you have in the beginning, of course, it will be fixed, but uh, it, it is happening. And, um, and, um, and so at um, some point you also have to replace then maybe some defect products. Um, so, but if the innovation is so, fast actually then it might be after a few years also very difficult to replace um, the module that was once having that size and is now having yeah. that size no this is, um, this is this is interesting and again the innovation cycle is getting shorter and shorter which i think uh, shows how dynamic our industry is yeah and and to be honest this is also seen as positive from investors from banks and so on new players are coming in uh, new engineers are, are, are uh, won't wanted to be part of the industry, which I think is good. But have in your mind, if you change the, the module technology every six, nine or 12 months, this means for us that our cycle of redesigning system is getting also shorter and shorter. And for example, if we are getting a, a new system and, and let's call it a module, new inverter or structure or whatever, then it means that we have to get used to it during the installation, we have to work on it. We have to find improvements. And this is also a cycle time to, in, it, let's say, to improve the, the bill of material. Yeah? Um, and, uh, and the cost and the design has, has a huge impact on, on our LCOE, which we can offer. So uh, on one hand, good and super dynamic, uh, just what I've seen on the development here and uh, today only, um, this brings us also under pressure uh, to be uh, faster as well yeah? in, the, in, in, in design works and optimizing designs. Yeah? And, and this is what I want to, want to give also a bit to the, to the people who are listening you know, to the industry. And I mean, all the three uh, uh, guys who are sitting now with, with me on the virtual panel, I mean, we, we work with all of them, and which, is, which is good and nice, and we are looking forward to it. Um, however, I think there is still the segment of residential, commercial industry and utility. Yeah? And even in the utility, you have the segment uh, standard auctions, uh, we are the owner versus PPAs. No? And these are in generally four auctions, uh, four segments who have a di different dynamic. So I think in the residential and commercial, you, you like dynamics, but we in generally, we like dynamics if they have a benefit for us in terms of the LCOE. But if, has it, if this has no direct impact on LCUE, so for example, you make a new module and you make the price higher, but we, for us, it's no benefit, then we are not interested in this. Okay. And then talk about once, um, just to, to finalize it, to talk a little bit about durability, because I think you said yeah. um, you're now, uh, when you go to banks, actually, you, you talk about 35 years. Um, so we yeah. have warranties of 20 years um, for glass, glass, 30 years now. Um, but um, in your calculation, you have an asset um, you want to depreciate over 35 years. Uh, so um, can, you, can you just, uh, so, so what are you expecting then for, from, from the module makers also? Yeah, I think audience? in the past, it was always driven by the feed-in tariffs over generally 15, 20 years. Yeah? In a few countries, we had even a bit more, but this was our mental calculation. So with the financial modeling ended up on the day where we had no fundings. And this was for us, the business model. Yeah, for sure, there were also companies who, uh, who kept the plant and at the moment more and more things are falling off these 20 years uh, uh, subsidy timeframe. And then we, we have now a chance, which, which we hadn't before, we have the chance to sell the energy on the exchange which, or to make corporate PPAs, which I think is good. But the, the new development is different. So the new development goes, goes easily up to a financial modeling of to 30 or 35 years. It doesn't mean that we sign such a PPA. Yeah? The PPAs are in generally 
I would call it midterm, 12, 13, 15 years, 10 to 15, I would say. Yeah. But we are moving with our investment a bit into the situation with, with the real estates uh, uh, market because we cannot sign a 30 years uh, uh, debt arrangement with the bank. We can only do it for 15 or 20 or something. And then we have to, to reshuffle it a bit. But the financial modeling with a, a prediction about energy price, which is difficult anyhow, uh, goes easily up to 30, 35 years. Yeah, so we are taking over a bit more the, 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 the financial modeling concept from the US, which was already there a few years ago. So, uh, and this bring, brings us, I would say, in a new situation, and I call it uh, service concept, recycling concepts, no? um, even repairable topics. Yeah? The, we all believe that the module price will go further down. And you can easily also probably in 10, 15, 20 years, you can ex exchange the inverter or even the, the modules. Yeah? Um, so I think th th this becomes more and more, but then the topic of recycling services, uh, repairment uh, of the system is becoming more and more vi visible now and important for us. Yeah? 35 years, the module will completely look completely different already in 20 years, I think, in terms of efficiency and so on. So it doesn't make sense at some point to replace them then. Um, so I think yeah. like you have yeah. also repowering with wind turbines. Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, but this is not, a, I would say, a digital decision. You really have to do the financial modeling. We are doing this now with the inverters. In the past, in the financial modeling, we always say you exchange the inverter on year 11 and you put an accrual aside and that's it. Yeah, If you really do it, yeah, so is it a benefit or not? But at the moment, we are going very deep into it and we analyze also the situation. Okay, we have a high tariff now. So um, there are inverters who have a much higher efficiency now. The prices went down over the last 10, 10 years and even go further. So there is now a financial conceptual behind when you exchange, when it makes sense to exchange it. Yeah, and this will be the same for, for modules. This is a little bit restricted that in most of the countries, you cannot easily exchange the modules because they are registered on a big database uh, and you can only exchange the module when they are, when they are broken or something. In, in, with the in, in, inverter on feed-in tariffs in Germany, it's a bit easier. But with modules, you, you cannot do it. You cannot do it after the 20 years. When you do PPAs, for sure, when you're in the subsidy-free area, you can do it earlier. But I think this will come. We see it now more and more within, with the in inverters. And then the discussion which we had also is becoming a bit easier that you probably build up your own stock. So for example, we have now inverters which are not anymore in the market. We exchange them, we repair it, put it in our stock, try to keep the technical availability on other plants high, but then we put a new inverter inside from, from our partners and we increase the efficiency. So you have a double effect. And I believe it can be similar to modules, yeah? Okay, super interesting. I think that was a great intro. Um, thanks, uh, Stefan. So let's let's come now to to um, the module representative, um, Jason Kwan uh, Gao. So when you when you hear that, what uh, what what Stefan said, uh, is this actually also when you sell your products or you develop also your products? Uh, is this is this similar comments you you are hearing from 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 the market from your clients? Maybe Jason first. Uh, sorry, I uh, beg your pardon. Yeah. So what Stefan said in terms of um, the innovation potential and the consequences, what, what, he 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 brought several points up. So so what what is the the most um, comments when you come with a new module to a client? What what do you usually see? What is the most um, yeah most uh, frequent reaction, especially with the new products you came up with now? 180. So 166 came and then. I don't know. In a sudden, you came with 182. Uh, so, uh, basically, for example, uh, uh, for our uh, HIMO 5 based on 182 millimeter uh, wafer model, so uh, we think the male model innovation uh, is a uh, smart surgery. So, for the uh, HIMO 5, as I addressed above. So basically, so LMG smart surgery includes two technology working tandem. So uh, it includes integrated segment ribbon and micro gap cell technology. And the triangular section of the ribbon can maximize the capture of solar energy 
And while the flat section realize the micrograph connection of cell, so that means the advantage of smart surgery is high efficient and high reliable. Mm, because of this technology innovation, you know, we have achieved the 2020 ones in the solar award. And um, basically when we uh, launch a new product, so uh, our customer will most care. So firstly, of course, about the, uh, whether it's cost effective and also uh, the care about the energy yield performance and the reliability of the system, uh, because you know the first principle of the uh, power plants is always the better LCOE. So our customer uh, will consider comprehensively all of the factors, including the motor cost and also the both both cost of the system and the stability of energy yield and also the uh, reliability of our models and other systems. And also uh, they will care the, as uh, I think as um, it's a system compatibility because um, so as uh, when we when when a new product is released, so uh, for example for the EPC, uh, they need to uh, consider the design of the power plants. So they they need, they, are, they care about the cost uh, of the system. Yeah, I think that's the uh, answer. Okay, Quan. So when, when you come with your new products, actually, and you kind of really show them what your what your USPs are um, for that product to customers. So so what's your what's the comments you are, are are hearing usually? So especially with your new products, recent 182 Deep Blue. So what what were the reactions? Uh, firstly, uh, it is our high reliability of the product, which is a fundamental thing. I think. Uh, we also use the high quality encapsulation materials, but mature workmanship and advanced management system to ensure the high quality stability under the mass production. Moreover, and the cell technology and the module technology we use is based on improving the customer's benefits, which is also our original attention. We designed the module for the rooftop commercial and industrial and uh, utility scale to meet the different customers' need. And at the meantime, we could provide superior solution for the reduction of the BOS cost, reducing the direct cost and the quality cost for the customer. Moreover, in comparison to the ultra-large current module, the size survey proves that there will be a 2% increase for the electricity yield because of the lower module temperature. And we will keep on track for this data. Uh, that's it. Okay, thanks. Um, 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 Gao, um, so I think you, you have a very comprehensive um, solution actually, um, so because you do the tracker, you uh, come up with the new modules, you have the, the new clamps. Um, so what, what, and, and, and in your presentation, you also showed, of course, um, that 210 needed um, more explanation because, of course, it was a tick larger. It needed a tick more um, yeah, um, applications. I think the, the, the containers, uh, so the packaging had to be changed. That had to be done. You had to look for inverter manufacturers redesigning their products so that they can handle higher currents. So, so how did the discussions go actually with the, with the customers? Because um, as we can see from your numbers, um, you're selling a lot of products and you're focusing completely on that. Uh, yeah, Michael and uh, Steven, thank you for the information you showed. Actually, from trainer point of view, uh, we are always customer value driven. And uh, we believe the performance on the electricity generation is one key ele element, but it's basic. Another key element uh, is the reliability. So we are very concerned on the reliability and the way we uh, invest a lot of effort and a lot of money uh, in the to, to improve the reliability, to, to verify our reliability. But we believe still this is too uh, basic and the customer, as Stephen just mentioned, customer have more and more requirements like the sustainability. As I just mentioned in my slide, uh, 
uh, we are care about the CO2 emission, the carbon footprint. So all the products, when we designed, we think two things. Number one, uh, can we use such kind of uh, recyclable material? Number two, is that, uh, is, that po is, that, is that possible that we can do some recycle? So this two parts uh, is in the consideration. And uh, uh, soon, uh, maybe you will see some, um, some new, new things comes from China, okay? And uh, from the sustainability point of view. And uh, secondly, as Stephen mentioned that about the uh, warranty to 35 years, I cannot see, uh, yeah, that, that's, that, that is, uh, uh, we, can, we can guarantee for that. But uh, I do heard some, some points about it. But in other, uh, another way, uh, I would like to see, uh, as Stephen mentioned, uh, the uh, innovation cycle is uh, shorter and shorter, and uh, it's really need to, it really need to do some financing analysis to see if it's uh, worth to keep the old design or renew the, uh, renew the, uh, the power plants. But of course, during the uh, life cycle of the power plants, we are also heard some a custom voice to see if the if that we can provide some modules to replace the older ones to repairing, yeah, that, that is also in our consideration. Okay, and okay, and how how is the the feedback that you're getting? Because I think Stefan was also saying, okay, um, I don't know if it is special to Anna Park also that they prefer the smaller module so that one person can lift it because um, it doesn't matter actually I think. Uh, 182 are around 32 kilos, uh, 210 are around 35 kilos. So the difference is not so much if you talk about the uh, um, 60 cell, 20 kilo um, <laughs> modules you had in the past. Um, or um, so, so, so. What's the feedback you, you're getting on that from, um, from from EPCs? Because the trend is there; it's getting bigger. Ryzen even talked about the 700 watt module it might get even larger than this. So. Uh, so, 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 what, what was the feedback you get from from customers from big EPCs, also in China, where, um, of course, labor is probably cheaper, but um, but still, um, what's what's the feedback from the big EPCs installers? Okay, so I believe the application uh, will decide how the product will be looks like, and uh, look at the two ten. We have four hundred. Uh, Vitex S, which is suitable for the residential application, and you can use it for DIY, right? And uh, that's uh, one application. And uh, also we have 500, uh, which is suitable for, for the, some big residential and uh, CNI, that's the application. And for the utility, we can see two, two trends. First trend is difficult for installation. So we, we should provide the smaller module for one man handling. And uh, another, another trend is that, uh, as I wrote in some article, I said that uh, the boundary of the PV industry is changing from time to time. In many years ago, nobody can imagine we have 500 watt module, we have 400 watt module, it's 200 watt. And the 300 is all, all, already the rooftop, right? Now we can see the 600 and then maybe in the future we can see even bigger. But how we can handle that? Uh, what we can see, what we can imagine is in the future, maybe for the big utilities, especially the big utility in China in the flat uh, ground, uh, we can introduce some uh, mechanism to help the workers to handle to, to handle the modules onto the tracker, to maybe automatic install the module onto the tracker. That way I'll be completely change the uh, other uh, binary of our uh, PV industry and uh, I believe it will lower the LCOE in advance, and at that time we will see more. Uh, we can image. Uh, it's, I think it's it's a very uh, good future. That's another direction. Okay. Okay. I think maybe, maybe Stefan, uh, would you would you see that also that in the future actually it will be even more like everything is getting more automated. That also installation could be much more automated that we see really robots, like we see also now cleaning robots uh, that we have in yeah, I think robots. I think the interesting thing is that it's, it's especially here in Europe, uh, it's not dr so much driven that we, that we want to optimize it to, to, I would say, to save cost or something. It is really, we do not have electricians anymore. The energy transition in, 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 in Germany or in Europe can fail because we have no educated people anymore. 
And if you if you want to make the electrical connection, you need an electrician. And there are there there's not a single electrician who has no job. Yeah. So and this is uh, but 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 this brings us also to innovations. Yeah. And and uh, I'll give you an example. We developed this innovation uh, also for installing the mo the modules also in harsh temperature. We did a hundred megawatt project in Kazakhstan minus twenty degrees. We know that you cannot really make the cable connection for this degree. So what we build, we build a large tent, yeah, and inside the tent we prepare the modules and we we slide it over the structure always outside. So we made the connection inside a tent which was 20 degrees plus, and then then we push it out. Uh, it was a bit challenging, so finally we took the tent and moved uh, away. But I think the general concept to have one large area where, where you completely uh, away of harsh environment challenges and you do the installation and then you have probably small rolls in the structure and then you push the, the modules through the structure into the field, why not? Yeah, and, and this is then interesting. On the other hand, uh, Michael, you, you know this, we, we've seen, um, especially in the thin film industry a few years ago, these, I don't know, five square meter, 10 square meter modules, which was then I would say installed with a, with, with a small truck. I think this failed, yeah. Um, and and this is mainly driven because it, it 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 was too slow. Yeah. However, again, I think we are always interested, and I think it is good that all the manufacturers here on on the panel uh, who are active in residential and commercial because they are finally the market driver for new things. Yeah. And with good marketing, you can convince them. And if we see that this works outside. And it's also easier for us to go to the installers and say, hey guys, this is already in the market. So don't tell us this is new and you want to have one cent more for the installation. Yeah. So I think that all these players are in the, in the wide segment. This is, this is interesting for us. And again, we are not against innovation, so not at all. Okay, maybe final word from everyone. So of course we are all suffering um, from well, some are also profiting from higher module <laughs> prices, but um, <laughs> but um, of, we we expect, of course, this hike to at least ch some point change when there's again enough silicon and the whole raw material uh, rally is uh, is coming to somewhat to normal again. So, but if we look at LCOE, so that means we still have to compete on cost. Um, we still have to um, have to see um, when we when we want to get into into new applications that we get also um, also cheaper and continue that course that course so what do you see everyone as the as the largest um, levers for for further um, LCOE reduction in the in the next two years let's see it was it like Shravan for example who said okay perk is at the end and it's now the cell, um, we have to go to N-type or whatever. So where do we see actually now the next innovations coming in the next two years to um, get costs down? So um, I think everyone quickly, Jason, maybe you want to start? Okay, so uh, basically, uh, you know, I'm Lunchi, so uh, for the product sale, uh, actually the uh, mass production, product sale efficiency has, I think, reached to about 23.2%. Uh, so since the, I think the uh, water record is close to 24%, I think, uh, I think in the next next uh, couple of years, still has a, a potential to improve the sale efficiency. Um, uh, we, we also have uh, a lot of work to do on the product sale and uh, product technology. Uh, in another hand, uh, for the high efficiency cell, uh, for example, for the N type, uh, Topcon, HJT. So, uh, you know, uh, I think it's uh, uh, recently the Lumji has announced a water record regarding the uh, Topcon cell and HJT cell. So, uh, which means that we um, uh, actually, you know, uh, each year uh, we spend about 5 to 7% of our, our revenue. On our R&D, so regarding on um, different advanced and cutting edge technology, so we are evaluating you know, different set of technologies. Uh, for example, the HJT and Topcon and uh, Um So we are, uh, I think, we are R&D is uh, focused on 
uh, each of the technology. Um, however, uh, we think uh, this uh, NTAP high efficiency technology is uh, promising, uh, but still, uh, I think in recent years, maybe in uh, uh, this year or next year, uh, still uh, need uh, still face uh, some challenge. Uh, so the main challenge is because uh, I think the high cost of the I think the uh, the uh, sales uh, equipment, uh, for example, for the top car sale. Uh, so for uh, one gigawatts, the equipment cost will be I think close to um, three hundred million MB. And for the HJT, so the cost will be, will be higher. Uh, it's close to 500 million uh, and be uh, per gigawatt. Uh, so we think the, the, the NTAP is uh, most promising. So uh, once we uh, solve the cost issue and also the uh, high volume production issues, uh, yeah, that's all. Okay, thanks, uh, Quan. So what do you think um, key, key ways to reduce further LCOE in the near future? Uh, to reduce the uh, LCOE further, I think uh, we should analyze the cost. The costs are divided into direct costs and indirect costs. The leverage the cost of electricity reduction mainly rely on the reduction of BOS costs and the increment of the electricity yield. Uh, for the direct cost reduction, the method could be improving the module power and efficiency by facility factor, reducing the degradation, etc. Uh, we use the optim optimize the perk develop and also develop the N type cell, as well as the slot frame used to reduce the installation cost. Uh, that can be the future potentials to reduce LCOE. Another expect is for the reduction of the indirect cost. The method includes improving the production yield rate of modules and reducing the quality risks. To achieve that, the intrinsic ability of manufacturer is very important. And we always insist on the reliability first. The life cycle quality management could be achieved by raw material and process control product quality control and the turnkey training, etc. So the reliability of both products and services are the key to provide a better solution in the future. So we may focus more on the service part. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, interesting. Um, Gao? Yeah, as you may know, uh, China is also looking into the uh, entire Topcon technology and the HJT technology as well. We're trying to figure out which product is the best fit for the future application. And uh, as I mentioned, it's all, everything is customer value driven. So we will pick and, uh, and uh, study carefully to pick up uh, the right product for our customer. That's uh, what we can see. Another thing is we are trying do some um, innovation on the other part, not on the major, uh, we can say technical uh, paths, uh, improve, uh, evolution, that's, that's you already you already know. We're also looking into some, um, some um, other materials to see if it's uh, possible that can, uh, can, can help the customer save the initial uh, investment. That's, uh, that's uh, I think that's the direction we are driving. Of course, I think the reliability is something not negotiable. So I will not really um, say that we compromise anything here. Yeah. Okay, super, thanks. Um, maybe final word to you, Stefan. So, okay, at some point you hopefully can also buy cheaper modules again, but be excited from that. Um, where, where do you think uh, can you improve to, uh, to reduce LCOE? And yeah, I think the, um, the older developments, they are really promising. And, and what I hear and what I listen uh, also from this platform and other platforms is, to be honest, super interesting. And I'm really looking forward to see also the, the next steps and next phase, which are completely out of the box, non-standard new design developments. So I'm looking forward to it. And I hear now a lot of things from also our partners uh, that there are a lot of things are happening. But I think let us also do not underestimate that the, the additional cost which are there and this 
we all see the elephant in the room, customs duty in India now, uh, potential CO2 duty for products which have no CO2 footprint. I think we need to ensure also that um, that uh, our Chinese partner have a footprint here in Europe. No? So, and uh, I mean, logistic cost will increase, or will, will not decrease, let's say, so it will only increase. And, and this means automatically, if the module price goes down, the percentage of, of logistic cost will increase. Yeah, um, CO2 footprint, I mentioned this already, but also local developments. No? So I think uh, uh, I would really love to see um, module assembly units somehow here in Europe and uh, this is also part of Solar Power Europe and all the politicians. This helps us a lot to enable and to the projects and to deep bottleneck the general processes. So I would really love to see one of you guys here in, in Europe somewhere. And let's make a really a gigawatt fab for module assembly unit. And then you can ship only cells. And I think this uh, to put cells in a container is easy. To put modules in a container, half of them is air. So um, looking forward to it, Michael. <laughs> Okay, super. Thanks. Okay, so then thanks to everyone. Um, thanks to all the speakers, to this panel. Thanks to the audience for staying with us for two days. Thanks to my team, actually, for helping us with the event. And um, just um, a few words. Um, as, um, as said, um, we will soon come out with a couple of reports um, and um, we will here, this is, these are some of the reports you can download for free on our website. Um, there are several more coming until the end of the year. We have one more big event, one more um, virtual event, um, and that is um, taking place um, December 14 to 16. It will be a three-day event. And there we will delve into cell technology very deep into all the cell technologies that are out there, especially the high efficiency cell technologies. We will look into TopCon, where are we? Where can we go? We will look, talk to, we have equipment manufacturers, we will have materials companies, we will have researchers and we will have cell module manufacturers simply to look into the state of the art of TopCon, of HJT, but even we'll look beyond that, that, beyond that. So, because we also heard, for example, that several companies are already um, working on tandem solutions and often perovskite is uh, the second <clears throat> part of the stacked cell so that's what you can expect from us again thanks for joining us and have a nice day still or a nice evening bye bye Sometime. thank you michael bye. thank you bye bye thank, thank you everyone thank you everyone bye